Well, good day. My name is Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and we have our new our new uh, rescue right here. This is a baby turkey vulture. Uh, came from down in the St. George area, and it was found up a canyon on the ground and uh, starving to death in you know 110, 114 degree heat. So the people decided they were going to try to rescue it and bring it to us. And so this is uh, very much wild and we're going to try to give it its very first meal. And let's see what we can do, see if it'll take it on its own. You take it on your own, sweetie? You take it? Huh? Where's my baby? Okay, I know. I know, it's so scary. So, so scary. Oh, come on back. Where's my little one? This is kind of an awkward way to do it. I usually try to hold them when I do this, but right now we're just uh, wanting to let you see it. Uh, almost. Almost got it in here. And Susan's at work, and I. There we go. Such a good baby. Such a good little baby. And they're quite hesitant right now. Like I said, he, I'm not mom, and he knows it. And so he's a, a little shy and nervous about the whole situation. But we're going to uh, see if we can get just a couple, three bites in his mouth. Here, I'll turn you around this way a little bit, sweetie. Uh, we love turkey vultures. Turkey vultures are one of the most amazing creatures on the planet. There we go. Here's another bite for you. You know, they're as an adult, they'll get the the head will turn red, but as a juvenile, it's black. And we're just going to get this little baby just a little bit of food. They're very sweet. They're very docile little little creatures. In fact, the worst thing about them is they poop on you. And I've certainly been pooped on by my share of turkey vultures in my day. But uh, we'll get this one. And you can see it started to swell up right here. That's where the crop is. That's where food is stored. And, and uh, so each of these bites goes into the crop until the gizzard is uh, ready to digest and then it, piece by piece goes into the gizzard. Here's my little one. How are we doing? Yeah, we're doing good. These are magnificent little animals. They uh, basically do such wonderful things for us and and uh, helping to keep down the, the spread of disease by consuming dead, rotting carcasses. And so we love to have turkey vultures around. Um, a lot of people think they're ugly, but I don't. I think they're beautiful because they, they serve such a, a, a remarkably good purpose. And so this is our newest. Yeah, can you get one more in you? That would be a pretty good sized meal for a first meal. It will, that'll be a nice meal for a first meal for you. Yes, you will, huh, baby? Come on, one more piece. That's all we'll do, just one more. Get one more from you. Uh -huh. He says, no, I don't want to. But you're all right. Yeah, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. We'll give you some more in another hour or so. But that's our newest little rescue. Very excited. Let me show you some of the things that, about vultures that are so truly exceptional. Look at that beautiful face. Look at that, how sweet that is. And uh, 
it's very very nice because turkey vultures they're as an adult their heads are pretty much bald they got a little down on top but you can see the white right uh, to the uh, right of the eye that white area that's just a little bit of a feather that's in their ear because their heads don't have feathers covering them you actually get to see what a bird's ear looks like like I said, I get asked all the time, do birds have ears? Well, there you go. That's where a bird's ear is, and it's just a small hole on the side of the head. Now, you've got those big, big nostrils, and those big nostrils basically allow them to smell really well. Most birds have virtually no sense of smell, but the turkey vulture can smell a dead, rotting carcass from about 3,000 feet in the air. And so they have a tremendous sense of smell, and that's actually how they find food. And another thing that people don't realize is, look at these feet. Now these feet are flat, they're soft, they're, the nails are tiny compared to, to a hawk or a falcon of equal size. And so these feet are not designed to kill anything. They're basically just des designed to, to walk on and to perch on. And so the, their feet are pretty much harmless um, as, as far as... Uh, you know, hunting's concerned, it's, it's, they're of no value. So it's, they're just strictly for perching. So the turkey vulture isn't a, a carnivore in the sense of a apex predator. They're just strictly a scavenger. And uh, truly, truly magnificent. I've rescued a lot of turkey vultures over the years, but this is actually the first baby turkey vulture that has come into our rescue center. Uh, that we're going to need to uh, raise. So it's going to be a, a neat, fun experience for me, and I hope a neat, fun experience for all of you as we try to videotape our little baby's progress and keep you informed about how he's doing. So that's our baby turkey vulture for the time being, and we'll get back to you guys uh, soon with some more video of our, of our newfound friend. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Isn't that fun? Hello, I'm Martin with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and uh, my sweet wife Susan is seeing our baby turkey vulture for the first time that, that has just come in today. And, and I wish we had the, uh, the uh, camera on so that you could have heard her response. It was kind of a breathtaking, oh, he's cute. And so I thought that was, that was very, very funny. And he is, he's quite adorable. Why don't you come over to this side, Sue? He is, and that's what I said. He's so cute. Hi, baby. That's my little turkey vulture. It's the first baby turkey vulture I've ever seen. It's the first baby turkey vulture. I've seen babies before, but not, I've never actually had to rescue a baby turkey vulture. And so this is the first one we've ever had to rescue. And uh, he's not quite willing to eat on his own, so we have to kind of feed him. We'll give him the opportunity here. If he wants to take a bite or two. Hi, baby. Okay, sweetie. That's my little baby. Okay. Yeah. See that little growly sound that he makes? It's, it's his little threatening sound. Come on, little one. I know. Get this in your beak. There you go. There's my baby. Yeah. Oop. I know. Now you're all the way backed up. Yes, you're making it hard to feed you. That's okay. It won't be long until you be eating all on your own, my little friend. That's my baby. Look at that beautiful, beautiful little black face. So cute. Really adorable. I never thought a baby turkey vulture could be so cute. They are. They are beautiful little animals. And you know, we, we love them to death. They are so beneficial to our environment that uh, we just love to see them. We love to watch them fly. They're magnificent flyers. There's my baby. I know. Let me get this one in too. Okay. 
and in a day or two, when he's a little bit more used to me, then we'll be able to just put food out and uh, he'll be able to just eat by himself. And when he starts eating all by himself and we don't have to hand feed him, then we'll uh, just put food down for him and leave, leave. Try not to get him too terribly imprinted on humans. We don't... That's not a good thing. Yeah. But he is kind of the... Kind of at that young imprint age, isn't he? He really is. Hopefully he won't imprint. Yeah, like I said, the more, the more we can get him to eat, the faster we can get him to eat on his own, the better. So tell me about why he's here. Well, this little turkey vulture um, was found by a couple that were hiking up one of the uh, steep canyons down in the St. George, Utah area. You know, the bottom of the canyon, uh, it's a dry canyon, there's no water, there's no shade. Uh, they saw this little guy on the ground and they couldn't find a nest, but they, they really do nest up in the cliffs on, on kind of holes and ledges. And so they, they did, weren't able to find any way of uh, getting him to a nest because they couldn't find the nest at all anyway. So they brought him down and uh, last night and they tried to feed him, but they weren't feeding him what he needs. They were trying to feed him canned cat food, which is not necessarily the best thing for them. So they called us on the phone here at the Wildlife Foundation. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I, when they told me that they'd picked up a baby turkey vulture, I'm going, well, uh, that's really odd. Are you sure it's not a hawk? And they, you know, because we this time of year we do have the uh, the Cooper's hawks that are about this age coming, that have, have started to come in, and, and the Swainson's hawks, and so on. So I thought this was probably uh, one of the different hawks in the area. But no, it's a baby turkey vulture. And again, it's the first baby turkey vulture I've ever had the opportunity to, uh, to raise. We've rescued a lot of adult turkey vultures in my lifetime, but this is the first baby. And so we're really quite excited to have him as our new patient. Uh, that was his third feeding. We fed him three times now. And so he'll hopefully be coming along very, very well. And, and let's see if we can get him raised up and return to the wild where he belongs. He is so cute. Isn't that the silliest, oh silliest thing that you have ever seen? Yeah. I mean, look at this face. He does really look silly. He's adorable. Look at that face. You know, they say it's a face only a mother could love, and that's probably true. But uh, I, I just think he's just as cute as a bug. Oh, he's adorable. Just the cutest little thing. I guess we're birdie mothers because we think he's cute. Yeah, we are. You know, face only a mother could love, and I guess I'm a mother turkey vulture because I, I think he's just truly, truly adorable, and we're very excited. To, to have him. So this has been a unique year for us. We had uh, the first time in 50 years that I have had the opportunity to raise baby roadrunners. And this is the first time in 50 years that I've had the opportunity to uh, raise a baby turkey vulture. So we'll kind of leave him, leave him be and, and uh, this is his evening feeding and we'll feed him again uh, first thing tomorrow morning. How's my baby? How's your baby? Just as cute as can be. Hi, little one. What are you doing? Can you talk to me? Yeah. I got some food for you, sweetie. Oh, yeah, you know the forceps. It says you want your dinner, huh? Here you go. There you go. Yeah. This is wonderful because if he's willing to feed himself, then it's then we uh, we'll get to the point very quickly here of actually uh, just kind of bringing food in and letting him feed himself and have uh, less and less human contact is what we want to do so that he ba basically just 
let let him try to get back to this, as wild as possible. And so at, at this stage of the game, we're still feeding him about five or six times during the day because he's only eating smaller meals. But it's very very soon we'll <clears throat> increase it to from one mouse to two mice, chopped up, and then maybe feed him four times a day. But this is just absolutely sheer joy for me. <clears throat> In my 50 years of caring for sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife, this is my very, very first baby turkey vulture. And I just think he's just beautiful and uh, quite excited to have an opportunity to, to do this. And hopefully within a month or so he'll be full grown and flying and and hopefully we'll get him back to the wild where he belongs. So that's our little friend, the turkey vulture. I'm just following Martin out for an afternoon feeding. Uh, midday feeding. Midday. Right? Midday feeding. Hi, baby. There's your lunch. Here's the baby. You think you're vicious? Watch your steps, sweetie. Okay. One of my favorite little birds that we've gotten in. It's really adorable. It's a turkey vulture. Cutest thing you ever saw. Hi, baby. Hi. Is that his corner? That's his corner. That's his preferred corner. You know, and as cute and as fluffy is he is, and I really, I really want to hold him because um, he really is adorable. And, and what he's doing now is being defensive, which is terrific. He's just basically threatening that he's going to attack me if I get any closer. And we love that. We want him to stay wild so he has a chance of going back to the wild. And so as, as hard as it is to, to not pick him up and cuddle, that fluffy thing looks like a little stuffed animal. We, we can't. We have to maintain a certain degree of distance because we want him to, to know that he's a, a wild animal and goes back to the wild. Happy to get a meal. Yeah, he's very happy to get his meals. How can you not fall in love with something that cute? He makes me laugh. He is cute. And usually I just drop the food and walk away, but Susan wanted some pictures, so. Yeah, Martin just feeds them and stays out of their way. Doesn't want them to be around people at all, but it's like, we gotta show people a little bit. 
He's so cute. He does make me laugh. I'm just smiling so big. If that doesn't put a smile on your face, I don't know what will. Absolutely. <laughs> And you can only imagine, you know, when he came in, what, three, four weeks ago, and he was uh, smaller than a softball. And now he's just this, oh, getting bigger and bigger and cuter and cuter. And what a great experience to have to, to raise a turkey vulture. Again, I have uh, okay. rescued several adults, but this is the first baby turkey vulture I've ever had the opportunity to, to raise and to care for. And, and I've really thoroughly enjoyed that this amazing opportunity. Well, we got to get out of here and let him do his thing. Like I said, but he's we're trying to keep him just as wild as possible. Okay. Okay, you guys have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Let's start with the uh, turkey vulture. I want to just see how much he's growing. Since I don't get out here with you very often. Of course, it's best not to disturb him. Yep. But we want a quick peek. Hi, baby turkey vulture. There we go. Yep, he's growing. See more of his feathers coming through all of that fluff. Cutie. Yeah, he's going through uh, five large mice three times a day. So you just cut them all up for him. Putting out a lot of food. Now he's going to go hide from you. Yeah, he's going to growl at us. He says, You're not supposed to stay here. You're supposed to feed and leave. Yep. Okay, we leave. Well, good afternoon. I'm Martin Tyner of the Southwest Wildlife Foundation. And I've just kind of discovered something kind of really interesting that I didn't know. And I've been taking care of these guys for over 50 years. So this, this I found fascinating. This is, uh, these are quail. This is Coternix quail. This is the same kind of quail that you uh, buy at the grocery store, but at the grocery store they're all you know, they're processed and they're, you know, the feathers are removed and the guts are removed and everything else. But for the, uh, for the birds of prey, we give them the whole animal because they need the whole animal, fur, feathers, bones, and everything uh, for their diet. And uh, we have this baby turkey vulture. He's just cute as a bug. And he's growing like mad. And, and for the last uh, more than a month, I've been chopping up food for him. But he's to the point now where he's most of the way grown and he's able to pull his own food. And so we put a whole quail like this in. Now for most birds of prey, you put a whole quail like this and they just rip off big chunks of it. I mean, they, they'll swallow the whole head, they'll rip off a whole leg and swallow it. They take big chunks of flesh and swallow it in big, big pieces. But the turkey vulture has been doing something really, really unique. And I didn't know this until, until I've been watching the turkey vulture feed. And here's what's left over from a whole quail. And this is, this is the turkey vulture. Now, if this were uh, a red-tailed hawk, if this was a, a falcon, if this was uh, an eagle or anything else, all of this would be completely gone. But what you're seeing here is the turkey vulture is deboning everything. And so this is, the, uh, this is the body of the quail. You can see there's its head, and this is its neck and its back and its back legs, and you can see everything's been removed, the flesh has been removed right down to the bone. He didn't, sw didn't eat any of the bone. I find that really, really fascinating, because most birds of prey, wow, they just, you know, there's not much left, and whatever they, they can't digest, they regurgitate in a pellet called a casting. Uh, but with the turkey vulture here, you can see the legs, and here's the, uh, the wings, and, and the, uh, the, the breast, or, or what we call the keel bone, and so literally every bone of this quail is here. 
and has not been consumed, even cl you know clear down to the little toe bones and, and the little ends of the wings. But every bone has been stripped completely bare of flesh. And so I just find that really, really fascinating. Um, I've rescued a lot of adult turkey vultures in my life, but I've never had the opportunity to raise a baby. And so to, to, to watch this and watch the baby so delicately strip the bone to, to absolutely bare bone is, is an amaz kind of an amazing idea, an amazing thing to watch that they, that they leave all of the bones behind. Uh, so from this to this, completely stripped of all of its flesh is uh, pretty fascinating. Pretty, pretty fascinating. Uh, and I, I think that's the reason that uh, we don't see um, uh, castings, pellets, regurgitated pellets like you do in the owls and the hawks and the eagles and the falcons. Uh, because they, um, and I always thought it was their digestive system was so, so powerful and, and so corrosive that, that they could literally just dissolve everything. Got a question. Okay, Sue, so got a question. Um, well, obviously he picked around all of the bones and they're intact, but he ate all the meat off of them. I'm assuming he plucked the feathers and they're just scattered around the chamber? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of feathers in the chamber. So he plucked them and then he eats all the way around the bones. And and, and, and eats the, in, the insides, the guts and the heart and everything, but leaves the bones behind. And so I just, like you said, that's, that's something I learned something new. About, you know, after 50 years of working with these guys, I learned something new that uh, our turkey vultures um, are, are a much more delicate feeder. They don't just rip and swallow, but v very, very delicately they pull. And you can see how, just look how close this is right here, guys. Not everybody wants to see this, but I'm yeah, sure some they need to. Be fascinated just like you. But you can see, see that all of the flesh has been removed from each of, the, of these individual vertebra. And, and there's, there's not a piece of flesh left in there. It's just, it's just skin clean. And so that's, to me, it was just very, very fascinating that um, that's how our, our little turkey vulture eats. And uh, I can't say that every turkey vulture eats like this, um, but ours, I think, is very, is very normal, so I, I would imagine that that's uh, kind of typical. So anyway, just a, a, little, a little interesting fact about, about turkey vultures that, you know, we've, we've got a turkey vulture here that just skins things down absolutely bare bones so he eats the skin and the guts and the meat yes and, and leaves the bones and plucks the feathers off and there's no meat here on the feather on the tips and he knows that so he doesn't waste his time on the on the wing tips very much or on the tail tip there's no meat there and so he doesn't waste a lot of time on that either so a little fluff there a little bit of feather on the on the wings but uh, yeah just just an interesting concept uh, from our our baby turkey vulture, um, you know, like I said, we learn something new every day. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Well, there's our little boy. Isn't he just the cutest thing you ever saw? This is our little turkey vulture. He's able to fly around now. Still has some downy on him. So it's going to be another month or two before he gets released back to the wild. But he's got to be the cutest thing you've ever seen. Let's see. Come on, Gary, get a good look at you. Yes, what a cute little boy. Now, he's a turkey vulture, but he doesn't have a red head like the traditional turkey vulture, and that's because he's young. He'll get that red head in a couple of years. Right now, this is the way he looks. Let's see if I can get a little closer in. Oh, there we go. Isn't that nice? Gonna hide your face from you with your wings? I want to see your pretty face. Yeah, we want to see your pretty face, my little friend. Yes, you are. Okay. There we go. 
Well, that's pretty terrific. Like I said, he's now able to fly up to the to the box, to the nesting box, and move around the chamber quite nicely. And so that's our little turkey vulture. We'll talk to you guys later. Welcome, everybody. I'm Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation, and uh, this is my my book, Healer of Angels. And it's 40 years of wildlife rescue stories and the wisdom of grandparents. And, and we sell this book to raise money for our wildlife rescue center. And I would like to kind of talk a little bit today. We've talked a lot about my book, but there's a, a, a new book just coming out uh, called Little John Crow. And it's about a turkey vulture. This book is probably for older kids, maybe up to 10. And it's a story about a turkey vulture. We call him John Crow in Jamaica. I grew up around them in a bull bay. So this is a story about a little turkey vulture who's trying to find him way, trying to accept who he is and fulfill his destiny and understand the importance of every individual in, this, in the ecosystem. And it's a beautiful story about, about the values uh, of, of individuals who are different. And I would highly recommend that you uh, certainly get my book, Healer of Angels, but also, please, uh, Little John Crow uh, by Ziggy and Orly Marley. What's wrong, Little John? asked his mom, Miss Cheryl Crow, when she saw the expression on his face. My friends don't want to play with me anymore because I'm going to be a scary, stinky, evil vulture just like you and Daddy. And I don't want to be a vulture, Mom. Tears ran down Little John Crow's face. John Crow, listen to me and listen well. You are a vulture and you should be proud of who you are, Mrs. Cheryl Crow explained. We are all here for a purpose. We are all connected. We're all important, even vultures. Your friends will accept you for who you are as long as you accept yourself first. Besides, we don't need living animals, only dead ones. And the Marley family has uh, been a tremendous um, sponsor of, of the Southwest Wildlife Foundation Enoch Wildlife Rescue here in Utah. And we're very grateful for them. But uh, I, I always love to, to help promote some great um, information. And this new book is, go is tremendous fun for children. And it, and it really shows the value of... Um, of the differences between us and, and the animal world, and so just because we're different doesn't doesn't mean that we're that we're bad. Uh, the differences is what makes us perfect. And we have a little fun trip today. We've got a male turkey vulture that came in uh, last June, uh, a little baby fell out of its nest in a slot canyon. It couldn't be returned to the nest. It was all white and about the size of a softball. So it was about that big when we got it in. And now it's full grown. And the turkey vultures are starting their migration. So it is time to get him released back to the wild. Hi, baby. Yeah, you know something's up, don't you, sweetie? Yes, you do. As you see, he flies really quite well now. Hi, baby. And we love turkey vultures. They're such an amazing animal. They are so beneficial. We love to have them. Hi. I, oh, I know, you're gonna bite me. Yes, you are, that's good. We like you to be mean and nasty, you wanna fight, we do. Okay. Regurgitating now too? Yep, he just threw up. And we'll have to take some food with you. And then the other turkey vulture in here is one that was a youngster that came in with an injured wing. Yep. 
So, so he's still got to stay? That one's still healing. Oh, you are so pretty. Oops, sorry. Blocking the gate, not keeping track of you guys. You know, if you come around here to the show, you see the how beautiful those wings are? Kind of the, the light glistening gray. Black leading edges and yep. the well, long ones are kind of a silvery gray. They are just beautiful, beautiful feathers. And if you look very carefully on the head, I don't think the camera can pick it up. The, the sunshine shines oh, on I it. I do, we see it. Do you, do you, do you see almost kind a... Kind of a blue like a pigeon or... Yeah, a little, almost a kind of a... Iridescent. A iridescent tint to it. You know, they are really gorgeous animals. Uh, people never understand that uh, because they just see the the bald red head. His head is normally black until he's stressed. Now this is kind of an interesting thing to look at. He is stressed because I've just grabbed him and you see his face is white. And, but normally it's, as a juvenile it's black, but as an adult it's red. But when they get over, when they get overly stressed, the blood leaves the the face and it turns white. Okay, so a, a, an adult that has a red head, would its head pale when it's not feeling well then or stressed? Yes, it'll go white. Or as a juvenile, from black it'll go to to almost a white color. So yeah, he's uh he's That's unhappy. Cute. Isn't he beautiful? Yeah. Let me look at those feathers on the head again. Look at the shine when the when the sun is just right. Yeah. Yep, he's got shine, kind of a blue, green, and brown, bronze shine. Yes, they are a beautiful animal. And and like I said, they are, they're a scavenger. Uh, they uh, clean up uh, dead carcasses, help to stop the spread of disease. Anytime we can have a turkey vulture in the area, it's just a really, really good thing. And so to get him put back is, is absolutely wonderful. So what a beautiful, beautiful animal. You know, this is the first turkey vulture that I've ever had the opportunity to raise. I've rescued a lot of injured turkey vultures who were full adults, but to raise a baby was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Once in a lifetime. I hope it's once in a lifetime because I hate to see these guys get hurt. And uh, so he's ready to go back to the wild. I'm so pleased. What a great day. Yes, it is. It's going to be a great day to let you fly free, my little friend. Fascinating bird. Yeah, I'm going to miss this one. Like, like I said, I've, I've had an opportunity to to uh, watch him and and see his his personalities and his behaviors. I've learned an awful lot about turkey vultures from this little guy. And so it's, uh, it's been an, uh, an amazing experience. And I hate to see him go, but I'm also very happy to see him go, to go, to go back to the wild and, and do his job of being a turkey vulture. Anyway, we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna take off and uh, we'll visit some more. Well, we're on our way to release the turkey vulture. We're coming south. Uh, the turkey vulture originally was down here in uh, the St. George area where we where he came from, so we're bringing him back down to the St. George area, and we're going to actually take him out kind of south and west of St. George, out to what's known as uh, through Santa Clara the and the uh, Beaver Dam slope to uh, kind of start him on his migration. So this is, uh, we've just got off the freeway in, in St. George, Utah. And you can see the mountains up ahead. And there's a pass through the mountains. And that's where we're going to take a little pass through the mountains to get uh, out to the Utah, Arizona line. Where we'll go ahead and release the turkey vulture. It's probably approximately where he came from, too. We don't know exactly. Yeah. It was somewhere down here in St. George. I don't in a slot canyon. In a slot canyon. There's a lot of slot canyons. Yep, all the way around. All around here, so it could have been almost anywhere around here. In fact, why don't you turn to the back seat and see who our passenger is for everybody? Ah! Oh. Cody.
Cody decided he should come along. Hi, Cody. Oh, good boy. So he's hanging out in the back seat. There was room for him. Hi, Cody. Good boy. He just hasn't had that big of a flight area before. And he was confused. There he goes. Can you see him? Yep. Ah, oh, there you go. That rock He's catching like a some vulture. sore. Yeah. Oh, yes. He can soar. Nice to see him soar. He's just a little confused. But yes, that air is. feels good under his wings. Oh, he's still soaring. Yep. I think this is a really good area for him. I've lost sight of yep. him. Now he's gone. But as you can see, this is, this is definitely really easy. Yeah, let me zoom out so you, everyone can see how much open space away from people, give him the best chance.
and the turkey vulture means the the world to our our environment and our ecosystem because what they do is to help clean up animal carcasses and help to stop the spread of disease there are very few animals in the on, on this planet that are more beneficial to our ecosystem uh, than the turkey vulture we far too often see the see uh, see animals. In fact, we far too often uh, put value on the wrong things. We'll put value on 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 beauty, which is wonderful, and wealth and fame and all those kinds of things. And we so often forget that um, that you don't have to have any of those things to be a tremendously important part of this beautiful planet that we live on. And the turkey vulture is a tremendous example. Uh, of an animal that is not the most attractive, uh, even though I think they're beautiful, and and they have such a bad reputation when the only thing they do is good, and is beneficial.